Your Fiora support just left you to go gang top and the only thing she left you with is a Poro snack and now you can't even be mad. You can't be mad now. Now it is 646 on the dot. And I'm starting off with Chef Kenji's pizza dough recipe. For this, we need 360 grams worth of bread flour, followed by around seven grams worth of salt, and then three to four grams worth of olive oil of choice. Now that wasn't quite enough, so I added just a touch more. Now we also need to add some warm water to this. I'm using 250 milliliters worth of warm water around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by four grams worth of instant yeast. Give this a quick stir and let it hang out for around 10 minutes before we dump this into our dough. After it's sat for around 10 minutes, you can place this directly into your food processor, throw on the lid and bring it up to speed. We're going to blend this for a total of about 60 seconds until you start seeing it form into a dough ball. This really doesn't take too long and this is going to help develop any gluten that you really need for the day. Alternatively, you can use a regular stand mixer for this or you can knead it by hand. It just will take longer to develop that gluten. Since we are making this dough the same day, this is a really nice alternative. Now, I a touch of olive oil to your favorite bowl and then grab the dough and just form it back into a ball. You want to make sure that it's a nice cohesive mass so that way when it rises, it rises really evenly. If you don't, you're just going to have a weird uneven mess of dough. Now place this back into your bowl and grab yourself a lid. We're going to let this proof for around two to two and a half hours or until it's doubled in size. While your dough is proofing, grab yourself some minced garlic followed by some diced white onions, a little bit of rosemary and a touch of thyme. Now grab all of your herbs that you're using. Feel free to use whatever herbs you want, but I feel like the thyme and the rosemary go really well here. Peel them back from their stems and then we're going to give this a nice chop. Now keep in mind when you're chopping your herbs, you don't want any big chunks of herbs because they are thyme and rosemary. They can be overwhelmingly strong if they're too big. This is what you want your herbs to look like. Now since it said avian bird, I'm using ground turkey, but feel free to use any meat that you want really. Now in your favoriteest paella pan, link down below if you want to pick one up, they're amazing. Get it nice and greased up, making sure there isn't too much excess oil in that pan. After it's heated to a nice medium high heat, dump in your onions and your garlic. As these cook, you do want to constantly stir them so they don't scorch on any parts of the onion or the garlic. This will take just a few minutes to start becoming translucent, and once that happens, add your herbs to your garlic and your onions and give it a quick stir just to make sure it's all fully incorporated. And now because I'm using my big paella pan, I can move the onions and garlics and herbs to the outside and dump all of my turkey directly into the middle. Make sure you season it heavily with black pepper and then give it a pinch of salt. We are going to be able to taste this before we finish it, so don't worry too much about seasoning it properly right now. Now this is on a nice medium high heat still to try to cook out some of that moisture from the turkey. You do want to make sure that you cook out as much moisture as possible without really overcooking the turkey. If there's too much moisture left in your turkey or your beef or your pork or whatever you're using, it will translate to a soggy dough later, so keep that in mind. Give your turkey a taste for salt and pepper. Mine definitely needed more, so I went ahead and added what I thought would be proper, gave it a quick stir to make sure all of it was ready to go, and then we have to actually cool this down completely before we can use it. You don't want to add your hot turkey and onions and your garlic to raw dough, so keep that in mind if you're doing this. You can do this a day ahead. Now the first two hours of proofing have finished, and this is what our beautiful dough ball looks like. On your cutting board, hit it with just a touch of flour and then drop your dough directly onto that and work the dough just for a few minutes. I ended up kneading the dough for around five or six minutes just to make sure I could form some additional gluten in the pizza dough before we let it rise a second time. Yes, we are going to let this rise for an additional two to three hours until it is doubled in size. Once you have yourself a nice bowl that is nicely shaped, leave it on your cutting board and just place the bowl over it and let this rest for around those two hours or until doubled in size. Now that our dough looks and feels like, oh by this is ready to be rolled out. Now I like to start off by pressing it down slightly and then letting gravity form some of that pizza dough. You can also place your knuckles underneath it if you wanna be really cool and then just drop it on the cutting board because you have no idea what you're doing, but gravity can really help you form this pizza dough. Or you can try to test your might and flip the dough in the air and you know, this actually felt really good. The dough was really elastic, it had a lot of gluten, but we don't need it to be round for this. So place it back onto your cutting board and roll this out into a rectangle. When we want to roll this out until it's around a quarter of an inch thick. This is going to be important because we are going to be rolling it, so if it's too thick, it's not going to roll properly. Once you have somewhat of a rectangle formed, we're going to brush this with a small touch of olive oil. You can just use some melted butter or some ghee or really whatever you want, but you do want a touch of fat on that flour and that dough. Once you have it all beautifully brushed, season it with salt and black pepper, making sure that the inside is seasoned, and then we're going to sprinkle on around 50 grams worth of mozzarella. Now alternatively, use some blue cheese, some gorgonzola, some cheddar, you know what, you do you. This is gonna be your Poro snack. 
And now for our ground turkey. I did initially measure out 200 grams worth of ground turkey and spread that on as evenly as possible throughout my dough. I noticed that it looked a little scarce, so I added another 100 grams of turkey, bringing this total to 300 grams worth of turkey. You want to have a nice even layer of your ground turkey, making sure that it isn't overlapping too much on top of each other. Any bigger pieces you can just break down and break apart so that way it is nice and even and you don't have too many big chunks of turkey throughout your poro snacks. Once you have everything laid out, slowly start curling the bottom up. This is going to be similar to making rolls or cinnamon rolls or anything like that. When you roll it towards the top, you do want to make sure that you are keeping the dough relatively tight and even all the way from end to end. If you don't, it does have a chance of being too loose and you'll end up not having a very even poro snack in the end. Once you curl it all the way to the top, make sure that the ends are tucked in. If you have some ends like mine that look like they can be tucked, just press the dough down and it's going to bake totally fine. Don't try to even it out any further than that. Now it's also important that you're seam on the bottom does run end to end and is as even as possible and then flip it back over seam side down and let it rest for around 15 minutes. After those 15 minutes of resting, we can start cutting these into our round shaped poro snacks. You can see what the end of this piece looks like and it is very thick on that end and that's just going to be a test piece for us later. Now I ended up cutting all of my poro snacks into around one to one and a half inches thick. You don't want to go too much more thick than that otherwise they're not going to really be a poro snack and they're just going to be a half a burrito or something. This should give you 12 fairly even pieces for your poro snacks unless you want to count the two end pieces which are a little weird and I just place those onto a separate sheet tray to bake. These poro snacks are are ready to bake and we're going to bake these at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for around 22 to 23 minutes. Oh, don't forget the, the two end pieces. Those, those are still good. Now go load up a game of Arum and get ready to enjoy some Poro snacks in about 20 minutes. Now again, mine went for about 20 to 22 minutes because my oven isn't the best and I can't get too much more color than this, but they did end up cooking really nicely. If you have a pizza oven, please use the pizza oven to get some more color on your pizza dough. But all in all, the dough felt really nice. They cooked beautifully. They had some nice color on the meat itself. And there are our Poro snacks from League of Legends. There it is guys, a League League of Legends Poro Snack. This is super easy to make. I mean, the dough does take some time to proof, but you can make it in a day. I started this around six in the morning. It's currently one and yeah, you don't really have to wake up that early to make the dough. Just make it whenever you want to make it. It also holds up really well overnight. So if you wanted to, you could just ferment it the first time with that first rise, pound it down, throw it in the fridge and have it the next day. So that way, if you just want to make some snacks, you have it on hand. And without further ado, I'm really looking forward to this, especially since I can fit this in my macros for today. So cheers. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> that is so good. Look at, can you see that? Through my giant bite. Look at the layers of the dough. Look at, look at how nice it looks. Can you, oh man, look at that, yes. The dough itself is chewy even without any kind of conditioner or gluten stabilizer. Mm. The turkey, super flavorful. The herbs come through, the garlic and the onions. Beautiful combination. If you want to, dip this in some marinara and check out chefpk.com where you can find this recipe along with some really cool merch like this Oni shirt. My name is Chef PK. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food and maybe, you know, you can have these in between your League of Legends breaks or something. You know, you got to do you, you know? How am I going to eat only like one? That's the dilemma.